Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Lawsuit has been filed against AEW, Kevin Kelly, and the Tate Twins. It took me a long time to figure out who the Tate Twins were. I didn't see that coming. They are the boys. Kelly alleges defamation from Ian Riccoboni and AEW, stemming from Riccoboni making comments on a Discord channel regarding Kelly being involved in QAnon cons conspiracies. He is seeking monetary damages, claiming AEW breached his contract. The situation has made it difficult for him to find work elsewhere. He was fired in March. Tate Twins were fired in April. Tony Khan stated publicly their releases were due to no-showing events, which the brothers later attributed to a miscommunication between them and management after they were booked to fly out of a different airport than they normally use. The claim they no-showed events is at the center of the defamation suit against Khan and AEW. They're requesting the court certify a class action suit against AEW. Here we go. Over the company misclassifying its talent as independent contractors rather than employees. This comes up every few years. And it never goes anywhere. But who knows? Never know when you might get uh, the right judge. Or the wrong well, judge, depending on whose side you're on. Well, they're demanding a jury trial. Uh, that is one thing that they uh, both sides are... Were, not both sides, but the, the Tates and... Kevin Kelly are, are wanting, they're seeking in damages of in excess of $50,000. And AEW has fire, filed a motion to keep it under seal. A judge is going to have to determine if it's going to remain that way. Um, you know, the, the, if you read, I saw a redacted copy of the lawsuit and... The boys talk about wanting money owed to them, travel expenses and royalties that have been owed to them. They say they were wrongfully terminated due to budget cuts. And then Tony, during the Super Card of Honor a couple of days later, both the pre and the post show scrums talked about the fact that it was because they no showed work. And apparently they're claiming that they've been ridiculed for that and it's been detrimental to their careers as well too saying that they've tried to go out and get booked but they haven't had a chance to kevin kelly obviously his case with ian that that is that came up and and is suing him and trying to get monetary damages from him saying that he was defamed and talks about going to hr and not having you know much success there and he has not been able to find work, including saying that AEW blocked him from being able to work the All Together show in May. So there's going to be a lot more to seemingly that's going to come from this. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. You know, the thing with a defamation lawsuit, I'm no lawyer, but... And if we have any lawyers, they can confirm or deny what I'm about to you say. Can play one on this podcast. I'm not playing one, but what I've what I've heard is it's a little difficult with defamation because a, Kevin Kelly is a public figure, and b he has to be able to prove that whatever was said about him, like Rick Bonnie knowingly knew that it was false and was actively trying to harm Kevin Kelly, and. You know, given it was stated on a Discord, that if I recall, like, Rick Abani didn't know it was going to, like, go public, I just feel like that's going to be very difficult to prove that Rick Abani knew it was false, said it on the Discord to harm Kevin Kelly, who is a public figure. Well, if I recall correctly, I don't believe that he called Kevin Kelly a QAnon member. It says that he shared a movie shared by... A, you know, QAnon, a lot of people that were QAnon conspiracy theorists and people that were associated with that really pushed the Sound of Freedom movie. And it said he remember him saying that it disappointed him again. Now, again, you got to be, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not sure how to parse all of that stuff out. Yeah, did, did Ian lie knowingly to harm a public figure? Yeah. And the public figure part is also hard because he's a public figure. And in the lawsuit, it does state that online, you know, people have drawn the connection, you know, and said that it, it was a QAnon movie, but then says that there was no connection between QAnon and the movie, that that's all been unproven and false. 
and I reached out to Ian and didn't get a response. I'm not surprised I didn't. Reached out to AEW. Brian Solomon did. He did not get a response. Reached out to Kevin Kelly. He pushed uh, Brian to, to Stephen P. New, and I know that Brandon Thurston has reached out to AEW with, with no comment yet on any of this stuff. And again, you know, did this prevent him from earning any other work? To me, the biggest thing is if they stood in the way of him working the All Together show, then he's got a little piece of a complaint that then goes to what both they are claiming, which is we are employees, we are not independent contractors, and we have issues with this, that, and the third. So, again, AEW will find out. I'm sure they don't want this to go any further than it really is. You know, again, they they filed a motion to keep everything under seal, and I'm sure that this, because they were contracts, that they are, if anything, would rather have this in arbitration because we see that with companies all the time of all sizes, not the the least of which has been WWE that wants to get the Janelle Grant situation to arbitration because it prevents a whole lot of possibly messy things from coming out and being public. And at the least, it prevents some things that are in, I'm sure that their private, their... Hand, employee handbook all those sorts of things i'm sure they want to keep under vest so we'll see ultimately in the next couple of days and couple of weeks here what ends up shaking out of this but it's a really it seems like an uphill battle to me just personally again being a layman not really knowing it just seems like it's a real uphill battle and i've seen this fight with independent contractors employees for a long time and if you want that to be the case, you have to unionize. It's not going to be a class action lawsuit that does it. It's going to be actually banding together and unionizing and getting support from other established unions. Otherwise, I, this is never going to happen. I don't think it's ever going to happen anyway. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.